This is a brief review on sequential fall excess. For a more detailed study, please review the longer series of videos posted previously on sequential ASCII and binary fall excess. We did a, a longer series of videos that went into much greater detail on sequential fall excess, binary fall excess, um, you know, SQL, database fall excess, different types of fall excess in C++. This is just a quick review of sequential fall excess. Um, just as a review for some upcoming projects that we have. And this is a console application, so I need IO stream. Um, if it weren't, if I were using an interface like an MFC uh, C dialog or something, then I wouldn't even really need that. But since it's console, I need IO stream. The very first thing we need to do is include the header file fstream to provide us with the of stream and if stream objects we need for file access. But the main class we need is fstream for you know both writing to a file and reading from a file uh, for you know upstream objects and ifstream objects and then I'm also going to include the string header file to make use of the string class object I'm gonna put our you know this project in the standard namespace so I don't have to do the std colon colon to access everything it's just easier there's just two prototypes and just two functions here this is gonna be a quick review um, write data and read data okay in main we have a simple menu and based on the player's, you know, or user's choice or selection, we're going to go call the method write data or read data. And just a little bit of bulletproofing. Um, hence, we're using a character array instead of a single character to handle additional, uh, you know, any additional characters they may type. So they don't overflow the buffer. We're converting it to lowercase, so it doesn't really matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. We're switching on it, and we're providing a default in case they type banana pancakes or some weird thing like that. Okay, so... What happens to write to a file? Well, if we call write data, we're going to create a string called data, and it's local to the function write data. It's on the stack. In order to write data to a file, you must build an instance of upstream. The sequence of events for writing to a file is, first, include the upstream header file. Second, build an instance of upstream. Third, call the open method on the upstream object. Four, pass in any necessary IS flags. IS out in this example, and possibly IS append or binary. Five, stream the data to the file with the data stream operator, or use a method such as get line if you need to get input and write a whole line of text to a file, including spaces. Finally, close the method on the upstream object when you're done with it. We're going to build an instance of the upstream class, we'll call it out, and we want to call the method open uh, on our object here on out. And when we call open, we're going to create a file called data.txt, uh, data can't even talk. And we're going to use the is flag out for writing to the file. And there's is append, you know, there's, there's a lot of different is flags. Um, see if I can get autocomplete to pop up something here. If I can get, yeah, okay, it'll give us a list. Look at all of these is flags here. Yeah, but I really only use a few, append, um, binary for binary, out for out, in for in, but there's all of these different IS flags, and you can use more than one of them. You can OR them together if you want to. Um, in other words, I could choose, let's say I wanted to do binary. If I come up here, all right, so I could choose binary, and it's not the logical OR, but the bitwise OR. Logical OR is two pipe symbols, bitwise OR is one pipe symbol. But I could do this, and then I could say IS out if I wanted to, okay? So I could order those together, and if you don't like the space, I kind of like the space, but I guess, you know, so we, so we can do multiple flags if we want. I don't really need that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do is out, but just reviewing that, okay? We're just reviewing that to bring that to back to your memory, hopefully. <laughs> so we call the open method. That'll create the file, and then once we do that, we can stream data uh, to the file, so we're going to tell the user, hey, enter some data. And we're going to ignore the first character. We're going to grab an entire line of data. Now, we could just CN, but remember that by default, CN, when it sees a space, it, that's like the terminating you know, character. It's going to chop everything off after the first space that it sees. So if I want to get an entire line of data, I have to use, instead of just CN, I have to use get line. Now, the problem is I have to use CN ignore the very first time to consume that leftover character in the stream. And then then once I do that, okay, I'm going to put that inside data, inside of our string, and then I, c I can take our string data and stream it out 
to our instance of the upstream object out, which basically will write it to the file that it opened, data.txt. Just as if I were sending it to the console. If I were saying C out data, but in this case I'm using an fstream object, an instance of if stream, and I'm outputting the you know string information to the file. Then I'm just going to close the file. Okay. In order to read data from a file, you must build an instance of if stream. The sequence of events for reading from a file is first include the fstream header file. Second, build an instance of if stream. Third, call the open method on the if stream object. Fourth, pass in the necessary IS flags, for our example, ISN. Fifth, stream the data from the file with the data stream operator, or use a method such as getLine if you need to read in an entire line including spaces. Finally, six, call the close method on the if stream object when you're done with it. Now what about reading the data? If we choose read data, I'm going to come over here. Again, I'm just going to build a, a string here. You know, like there's different, so many different kinds of strings in C++. You know, simple character array type strings. There's several different lowercase string objects. There's C string. There's LPT string, LPCT string. There's, you know, a lot of different strings here. But we're just going to use a, a plain old string from this header file. You know, including the string header file here. We'll call it buffer. We're going to build an instance of if stream. We're going to call open, and we have to find that file. So we're going to go match that file there, and the is flag is going to be isn, and I want to grab the whole line, including any spaces that might be in there. So I'm going to use get line, my instance of if stream, which is n, and buffer, which is my string here. And then once we read that, then we're going to just display that, and then we're going to close our file. And this is sounds to bulletproofing. You'd want to use try and catch, and maybe if and else to detect whether or not you know. Once you read from the file, if, if it's null or if it's empty versus there's actual data there. And if you need to review that, then you can watch the longer video. Good grief, it's probably too long, 30, 40 minutes. It goes into a lot more detail. But I'm just trying to keep this you know, brief and short, and just to make it a very simple, um, quick review of file access, sequential file access. What you need to do to write data to a file and to read data from a file. But if you need to know more, you know, please go check out the additional videos that I've already posted on binary and sequential file access in C++. So let's run the project and to rebuild it here. All right, and we will modify the menu color here real quick. And let's go ahead and write some data. Um, we'll say the quick brown fox jumped over the blue moon. Okay. And let's go ahead and quit. We'll exit. And I'm going to go into the project folder of the directory. And here's the text file that was created. And notice it wrote into the text file the quick brown fox jumped over the blue moon. Okay, so let's test our write function. Now let's test our read. So again, I'm going to run the project. You hear the train in the background there, eh? And I'm going to read the data. And once it reads the data from the file, the quick brown fox jumped over the blue moon. So just a very quick review of plain old ASCII or Unicode text, um, in this case, sequential file access.